Liberalism was created to solve a specific problem. That problem was the challenge of pluralism, the difficulty of achieving peace in European societies that were increasingly riven by disagreement about core beliefs, especially religious beliefs. The philosopher John Locke proposed that the state could act as a neutral referee, allowing for the free expression of a variety of viewpoints and beliefs while curtailing public expressions of those beliefs only when they caused harm or political instability. In addition, it was believed that through such promotion of freedom and tolerance of belief, people would be able to craft their own life paths as they sought fit, and as a result contribute to the peace and prosperity of society and the power of the nation. Liberalism thus proposed itself as a container of diversity in two senses of this word. First, it would contain the potential for diverse elements in society to descend into violent disagreement and experience fresh on many people's minds in the aftermath of the wars of religion. Liberalism provided a container in which these differing beliefs could coexist. However, it also sought to contain belief itself. For liberalism to work, it demanded a primary allegiance to the regime of toleration itself. What this meant, in effect, was that each person was required to recognize, for political purposes, that one's own belief was, in the first instance, merely opinion. While at the outset, the first container seemed to many supporters of liberalism to be the ideal resolution by which societies could at once secure peace and pluralism, the second form of containment over time undermined the very communities that were supposed to be protected under liberalism. Cultural practices and religious belief came to be seen as merely opinion, and over time became viewed as arbitrary impositions on the liberty of individuals who no longer shared those opinions. The liberty that was originally to be accorded to groups, religions, cultures, and traditions was increasingly claimed by individuals in the name of their liberation from those groups and traditions. And the protector of this individual liberty became the liberal state, which ultimately was ordered not to the toleration of plural belief, but an intolerant stance toward those groups that proposed restraints upon the freedom of the liberal individual. The logic by which the containment of belief itself undermined these kinds of beliefs and communities has now made those who defend these traditions uh, to be called representatives of illiberalism. While liberalism was created in the name of giving space for and respecting these various forms of diversity, today the disintegrating logic of liberalism is aimed squarely at those very institutions that it claimed to come into being to protect culture, religion, family, and the nation. Ironically, liberalism today regards as suspect the very political unit that was believed to be essential for the securing of rights, the nation. Early liberal thinkers believed that the nation was the most comprehensive form of political ordering that could be brought into being by consent, and the comprehensive organization that would ensure the individual liberty of its constitutive members. However, Today, the nation is increasingly regarded by many as an arbitrary limitation upon that same liberty, particularly the right to complete mobility in a world that, in the name of liberty, seeks the elimination of geographic, cultural, and even linguistic distinctions. In response, defenders of culture, religion, family, and nation have arisen as a political force in opposition to these internal trajectories of the liberal project. Some see themselves as recovering original liberalism, embracing the notion of a limited state that exists to preserve those forms of human organization. However, a growing number of leaders of various populist movements understand that they are protesting liberal logic itself and thus enter new waters in exploring different ways of grounding political society in distinction from the dominant liberal norms that have reigned for the last century. As liberalism devours the sources of its own nourishment, 
the demands of human craving for belonging in a world of meaning, membership, and community reasserts itself. I am Patrick Deneen, professor of political science at the University of Notre Dame. Ha tetszett a videó, iratkozz fel az Axioma YouTube csatornájára.